Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Lorraine Underwood, and this week I'm going to make a magic makeup mirror using pose detection. In my last few videos, I've been using pose detection, which I've absolutely fallen in love with. <laughs> it's such um, an easy way to create really cool, fun things with uh, Python and a Raspberry Pi. I've made my front window interactive, I've created a pose detection game, and this week we're getting a little bit closer. <laughs> So I find it really difficult to put on makeup. When I take my glasses off, I am completely blind. Everything is just a blur. When you want to do um, kind of detailed makeup like I do, it's quite hard when everything's just blurry. Um, I have to get really close to the mirror. Also like, look at that lens. That's like with thin down, it's a minus eight <laughs> in the UK prescription system. So I've also got um, the makeup I want to wear is called wings so they're like little triangles that come out from the side of your eye and my problem is that they need to match so we put you have to draw two on so when i draw one i can only see that one uh, so when i draw the second one it's crooked <laughs> so i want a mirror that superimposes the um wing onto my face that i can toggle on and off so that I basically, I'm just copying what I can see in the mirror, like, like colouring in the lines. Um, and that's what the magic making mirror is going to do. When you say ma magic mirrors, you probably think of the two-way glass. And I love to do that as well, you know, just have a, a normal mirror, but then turn it on into makeup mode when you're ready to do the up-close stuff. I'm not sure if images show true uh, magic mirrors, but that's something we'll test. Um, and it's always cool to have a magic mirror anyway. If you don't know, a magic mirror is a two-way mirror with a screen behind it, and the screen basically lights up the mirror and you can see the text through it, as well as yourself from the other side. So they're really cool, and a lot of people have made really cool projects with them. But I want to make my mirror to be interactive uh, with pose detection and a button to toggle on off the filters that I'm going to add. It could just be anything. It doesn't have to do it's just uh, makeup. It could be like real cosplay kind of makeup. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've ordered some see-through glass. Um, it's quite expensive, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> um, it's about like twenty pounds for A4. Um, so that will fit really nicely uh, on this monitor here, which we're going to use for testing. I do have a really cool uh, little monitor um, in mind, which I'll show you later. So while we're waiting for the glass to arrive, let's set up the software. So we're going to set up Raspberry Pi 4 with a operating system, a camera, and this monitor just to begin with. For reasons to do with the second cool monitor, we're going to install everything on 32-bit um, OS. So you can go ahead and install TensorFlow with the instructions from my previous video, but we'll need all this other stuff as well to get this working on um, this operating system with the new library that we're going to look at for facial recognition um, specifically. I found this tutorial really helpful. I'll leave the link on the Ellen 14 community um, and it gives you some more instructions on what you need. So we have mostly everything except for two libraries, the IAM utils and Dlib. So we've already got a numpy, numpy. Um, and this is what it's detecting, which is really cool and it works. I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's detecting all these points, which is great because we're going to use these points here for my, um, my makeup my tutorial, but maybe like the whole face for a uh, more complicated makeup. Some cosplay. I will say you need this file. It's like the model for um, the face detection. But when I download this, it's a B2Z file and I can't seem to extract it on the Raspberry Pi. So I just did a, a Google of this, of this name and I found it somewhere else on um, GitHub. And I was able to download it from there. It's quite big, but um, yeah, it worked okay. And then I was able to run this file, this uh, command, which I'll show you now. Okay, so I'm filming my screen, which I know is weird, um, but otherwise it just goes really slow. So let's start that up. 
um, point the camera <laughs> towards my face. Uh, so it's a bit weird because I'm looking at the screen, but I need to look over here and I need to look at the screen to see if it's found me. But we press S on this sample code. Ah, it's found me. <laughs> and then it starts to circle through all the different um, things that it's found. So it's really detailed on the mouth and the lips, which is great. Maybe we can do something there. Um, inner mouth, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, right eye. So these are the points we're definitely going to use. Uh, left eye, nose, gigantic nose, jaw, <laughs> and that's everything together. Fantastic. Back to our facial points then. So what I'm looking for are these three points here on each eye. So I'm going to draw from here, out to here, and then back to here with this kind of as the center point. So kind of like a triangle. But I don't want the triangle to finish, so there's a function, uh, polylines, in OpenCV, where you can just draw points that will just join together. If I feel a bit fancy, <laughs> so I can't just say like three pixels, because depending on the size of someone's face, three pixels could be over here, you know, it uh, could be there. So we're going to measure the distance between here and here, and then the triangle is going to come out maybe a third of this distance. The triangle hopefully will come out in scale uh, to each person's eye. <laughs> we need to make the code uh, react to live video, not on photos as well. So let's get to that. Okay, so let's look at the code that runs on the Pi. Uh, let me just get past all these functions. So the argument is like the um, model. So you run it with the model name. There was another model that just did kind of eyes, but I didn't feel like it was as reliable. So we're doing a continuous capture from the camera, getting the image in and then converting it to grayscale. And this is actually the code that detects the different parts of the face. So what this actually is, a, is a predictor. So it is different to the detector. So it's not detecting exactly where your eyes are, if it can't see your eyes, it actually predicts where they are based on your other facial features. Um, so it's slightly different, um, but I think it actually works just the same as the pose detector. So we get the shape and then we just draw the triangle using that shape. So let me show you draw a triangle. So if I send it the left eye, these are the coordinates for the left eye. So we have the where we want the triangle to start where I want it to end, oh, where the eye starts, where it ends, and the tip, the top and the bottom, and the color of our triangle that we're drawing. So we work out our coordinates. Like I said, it's the third of the way from our tip to our edge is the change that we're gonna do. And we do the same thing for the right eye, except it's just slightly different coordinates. So I'm just circling each point um, so I can see it. These are absolutely tiny circles, so it won't really matter. Working out my triangle, um, just took a lot of testing this. Then I created an array, a numpy array, numpy <laughs> array of points and created the polyline on CV2. Um, so it's is close, is false, so I don't want it to do like a triangle um, and that's the color of it. So let me show you that running. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! For this test then, I did move on to my husband's laptop because it's got a pretty decent GPU and I wanted it to, to be as quick as possible and it just has a, a better camera. Actually, the camera is probably similar to the Raspberry Pi camera, but I moved up to the dining room, which has better lighting than the basement in daylight. So this is the code running on PyCharm on his laptop, which is a, a Linux laptop. And look, 
So it got my two eyes straight away and it looks amazing. I'm actually thinking of using a <laughs> blue eyeliner because it just looks so good. Um, I'm just kind of, you, you can see it's quite slow. Like I'm not moving in slow motion. It is slow, but I don't think it needs to be fast for this. Um, and it tracks me. What's really funny though, I'm gonna pause the video and go back a bit and show you. <laughs> it's caught the photo of my son behind me and it's added wings to him. Can you see? <laughs> and that's just brilliant. I love it. <laughs> so here's the um, mirror, as you can see. So we're gonna add it to the monitor here. So yeah, it's a mirror. Hello. <laughs> um, the thing with these mirrors is it's all about the backlighting. So we're gonna add a, a black image with some text on it. Let's get a bit closer. So it's quite hard to film this, but you can just about see the word hello there. Um, hello world in total. So that's obviously the, the edge of the mirror and this is still the rest of the screen. Um, and you can see the camera and um, me, hello, in the actual mirror. This is awesome. Oh, this is so cool. Do you ever get like a piece of technology or you use something for the first time and you just, your mind just explodes with ideas? That's what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I feel like, oh my god, what else can I do? I haven't even finished this uh, this video. <laughs> and I'm already thinking about other projects that I could do with this mirror. Have you ever had a piece of technology do that to you? This isn't even technology, this is just a mirror. <laughs> Let me know your comments on the community page. With the mirror then, I was kind of hoping that it'd be like... Um turn it on and off with the screen behind it um, but I don't think that's really going to be the case here also the lag is crazy it's like four seconds <laughs> um, I think it's the 32-bit operating system let's see if I can try and get my eyes to appear up close there they are so the big issue is um, the difference between looking at the mirror and looking at the video. So even if I swap between the two using like a button, like turn off the video, um, it's the difference in focus, having to focus at yourself in the mirror and then focus yourself in the video, with quite two different views. I know I'm blind, <laughs> but it's just, um, it's just not practical, which is really unfortunate. So basically I'm not gonna use the mirror. So unfortunately the lag isn't okay because the lag that I was looking at were on, was on my husband's PC. Well, with the Raspberry Pi, it's about four seconds and that's like substantial amount of lag uh, when you're trying to draw something. Um, I might try back on my husband's laptop for a final test, but I wanted to show you uh, the second screen first. And it's this. So you might have seen this from Katie's video. It's a hyperpixel from Pimeroni. So it's a circular screen. And it's just beautiful. It's really thin and fragile. <laughs> it's like, well, it is glass. Um, and I've added the headers to the bottom there. So two double headers and a female um, extender on the pie. So we're gonna add this on and see what my face looks like on here. Cause it just feels like a, a compact mirror. It just looks really cool. So I'm wondering, even with this lowness, just to do this um, to see what it looks like. So I had to go with the 32-bit operating system because of this. This only works on 32-bit at the moment, which is adding to the slowness. So maybe in the future, this library will work on 64-bit and I'll be able to see the magic mirror going a bit faster. Before I add the hyperpixel to the Pi, I just unplug it from the power source. Well, <laughs> I shut it down safely. Unplug it from the power source, HDMI, and just all the peripherals um, so it's nice and loose. I just need to screw it in here. So check it out. <laughs> this is what it looks like on my little uh, compact mirror. Um, it's a bit dark, that's all I'll say, but that is really good. That's exactly what I wanted, that close and that kind of detail. I just wish it was a bit faster. <laughs> So here's some of the images that I got from the Hyperpixel. So it started off uh, really dark and it's an IR camera. So you see that pink shade came in a bit, but I shined a torch at my face. <laughs> and then we got these perfect images, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. 
So you can imagine this being like a compact mirror that you open up and it shows you what makeup you need to draw. Like, how cool would that be? Um, the technology is probably not just there right now, just because of the speed. But remember, it's, it is going slower because of 32-bit and I actually am showing my face on the screen as well. So that probably isn't helping the speed because it's showing two screens. Yeah, Raspberry Pi just doesn't have a GPU. So I wonder what this would be like on something like a, a Jetson, like a, a NVIDIA Jetson Nano or one of the bigger ones. Um, just need to get the Hyperpixel working because that screen is just beautiful. I've had so much fun in this project, but it actually has been a bit of a failure. So I didn't get a magic makeup mirror working as I wanted, but I learned so much and I had a really good time doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it all. You can find all the code on the Element 14 community. If you think it's worth trying with a better computer, get in touch and let me know on the Element 14 Presents community. I'll see you there.